one. What is up, everybody? We are back for another episode of Frenemies, joined as always by David Swore. I am DJ Cox, and David, we are rolling through the 30 team previews. This has been a lot of fun so far. We just got done with the Seattle Mariners. And today we turn our attention to the Philadelphia Phillies, David. And uh, this team is no doubt an interesting team. Uh, we're going to get into that a lot. This is going to be a fun podcast. I really am looking forward to talking about the Phillies this year, seeing your perspective on a lot of things going on in Philadelphia there. And got a lot of stories, got a lot of fun that we're going to have tonight with the Phillies for sure. Um, so, David, why don't you kick us off here? and talk about the 2020 Phillies and what they did last year. DJ, what a weird year. I think of all the previews that we've had, this is the craziest uh, preview of them all. They had just such a weird season last year. The Phillies came in with really high expectations. They uh, signed Joe Girardi to be their manager, former World Series champion with the Yankees. Uh, of course, they have Bryce Harper. They signed Zach Wheeler. Uh, they have Aaron Nola. They signed Andrew McCutcheon the year before that, I believe. So, I mean, really high expectations. And in a lot of ways, DJ, they met those expectations. That's the strange thing about this team. So they were 28 and 32, seven games back uh, out of first place. They actually went into the last day of the season, still able to make the playoffs. They needed to win. The Giants and Brewers needed to, lo needed to lose which they both did, but the Phillies got shut out by the Rays five to nothing and missed the playoffs. So, so just a strange season. Uh, they were sixth in the league in batting, sixth in homers, fourth in runs. So the team really hit. And, but they were next to last in ERA, which is crazy when you see that Aaron Nola had a 328 ERA, Zach Wheeler had a 292 ERA, and uh, Zach Eflin had a 3.97 ERA. And so the back end of the rotation was a problem. But more than that, they had one of the worst bullpens in MLB history. And, DJ, Ooh. just to be honest, this boggles my mind because you can say a lot of things about Joe Girardi. <laughs> but the man knows how to manage a bullpen. And so this just blows my mind. And uh, in their defense, in comes Dave Dombrowski. Old crew out, new crew in. So we got a whole new bullpen this year. Um, but the Phillies, man, they're interesting. They have a little bit of money. Um, and so uh, that NL East is, is super tough. So it's just going to be interesting to, to see what happens this year with the Phillies. Yeah, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some stuff to what you had there. What a crazy year. Uh, third place in the NL East last year, like you said. David, they went 0-3 versus the Orioles. Come on. If you're a team that wants to win a division, you cannot go 0-3 versus the Orioles. But it gets worse, David. They were 3-7 and versus the Marlins and 0-3 versus the Rays. And there's nothing wrong with going 0-3 versus the Rays. Obviously, they were in the World Series last year. But they really struggled with those three teams mightily, and it dug them a pretty big hole. Uh, they had a no shot at the playoffs there because of those teams. Like you said, it came down to the last day, and they just didn't get it done. Uh, they had four walk-off wins, which is extremely exciting. Didi Gregorius led the team with 40 ribbies. Bryce had 13 homers. Alec Baum, 338. 338. We, we pronounce it Alec Baum, David. Are we going to do that the whole show? Is that how we do it? Or is it Baum? Yeah. I have two. I don't know. Yeah, it does. I want to call him Baum so bad. Like, it's B-O-H-M, so... Phillies fans, feel free to comment and tell us what kind of idiots we are not pronouncing Alec Baum. He's just, I mean, he just won the rookie of the year. I mean, pretty much so. I don't know why we, why we can't even say his name right. But uh, Harper had a 420 on base percentage, which is off the charts. Uh, you look at his batting average, it's not so great. But that man walks so much, man. You already talked about the pitching staff a little bit. And, David, that was Joe Girardi's uh, first season with the Phillies, as you said, and only his second losing season ever. He was with the Yankees forever and won, had all those winning teams. Uh, the 2006 Marlins, the one season he was there, was the last time he had gone through a losing season. So I'm sure that did not sit well with him at all. Uh, so he struggled with that very mightily, I'm sure. The Phillies should have been better, let's just be honest. Um, 
at least 500. They always hover around that 500 mark. They can't get around it. Um, but it didn't happen. The top prospect, Spencer Howard, did make his debut in 2020 as well, which uh, he struggled mightily, but he's a uh, he's pretty good prospect for them in the future. The bullpen, like you said, just trash. Uh, historically, the second worst bullpen of all time to another Phillies team from like the 20s, I believe. Uh, so it's over seven ERA was was the Phillies bullpen, which just uh, completely um, baffles me. In comes Dombrowski and Sam Fold, former Chicago Cub, to be the GM and fix things, David. And so fix they did. Let's go over the Kia additions for this team coming into 2021, David. And Brad Miller has joined the team. He's an infielder and outfielder. Matt Moore, starting pitcher. That's an interesting one. We'll have to talk about it a little bit. Archie Bradley comes in. Three dominant reliever seasons for him, including 2020, where he had a 117 ERA. Jose Alvarado also comes in. He's a stud. Uh, 2018, 80 Ks and 64 innings pitched. Uh, Brandon Kinsler comes in, who ended up being the Marlins' closer in the playoffs last year, David. Uh, Tony Watson from the Giants had a 280 career area. Is coming in. Chase Anderson, another reliever. Jeff Mathis, the catcher. Travis Jankowski joins the team. Matt Joyce is back with the team. Uh, Ivan Nova is also on the team now. Hector Rondon is another reliever added. And so is Naftali Feliz, another reliever. So, David, there's a theme here, and it's called relievers. So, Sam Fold's main job was to fix that bullpen and try he did. So, what do you think of all the additions they did? I love the bullpen additions. Uh, the fact that they got Brandon Kensler on a minor league deal, it just oh, blows yeah. my mind. Are you kidding this me? This goes to show you, we talked about the Mariners in the last podcast, how much they needed bullpen help. Here's a guy who was one of a, a really good closure last year for the Marlins that is, could have been had on a minor league deal. What are you doing, Mariners? But uh, a, a lot of these uh, additions were just awesome. Jose Alvarado, Tony Watson, Archie Bradley have all been good relievers. Hector Rondon. Um, and so I, I love it, DJ. Now, what I don't understand is the back end of this rotation. <laughs> Obviously, Spencer Howard is probably going to be holding down one of those spots, and I understand that. I don't – I think they gave Matt Moore a major league deal, and so someone's going to have to explain that one to me. I, I know he was a big prospect in the past, had a couple of decent seasons, but uh, his last year was 2019. He only had two appearances, and I think he got hurt out of all, out all of 2020. I don't get that one, DJ. What do you think about it? Yeah, I'm completely baffled by the Matt Moore move. Is it, to be honest with you, when they when I heard, when I heard the Phillies signed Matt Moore, I was like, Matt Moore, like who is? The, don't tell me that's the former Rays prospect stud that was good like six years ago. Sure enough, man, it was him, and he was over in Japan last year, I believe, David, and came back over this year uh, from his Japan deal, and he's penciled in at the five spot so i don't know we'll get into that a little bit here but maybe they know something i mean in japan you got plenty you know plenty of opportunity to scout these guys and i do realize guys find it over there we could name all kinds of guys and so i didn't realize that he was in japan last year so again maybe they know something we don't sam fold is a smart guy that's that's for sure and again i like a lot of these other additions so i'm going to hold out hope that maybe matt matt moore can be a good number four number five an innings eater uh, again, Chase Anderson was the other guy they signed for the back end of that rotation, uh, along with Ivan Nova. Chase Anderson has had his moments, but was terrible last year as well. Same with Ivan Nova. I just would have liked to have seen them sign one more really, uh, you know, established guy. I, I like it too. I'm going to go with you on this. All those relievers, I think, are the key here. Normally, we just pick one guy who the key addition is. I think you have to go with the whole group here, David, because a historically bad bullpen needs a historically uh, uh, significant revamp. And that's what Sam Fold did. He, he saw the problem and he, to his credit, man, he went after it. And that was his main thing this off season is to try to fix that because he's, this team is really good and got a lot of potential. And so that was some the one thing he needed to fix and we'll see if he did or not. So the key losses, and there's a few here, I'll run through real quick. And then you can give me your biggest key loss for the Phillies. They lost Cole Irvin to the A's, Trevor Kelly to the Cubs, Austin Davis to the Pirates, 
Garrett Clevenger goes to the Dodgers. Phil Goslin to the Angels. Jay Bruce goes to your Yankees. Uh, Jake Arrieta goes to my Cubs. Tommy Hunter to the Mets. Blake Parker to the Indians. Adam Morgan also goes to the Cubs. Brandon Workman to the Cubs as well. Keith Embry to the Indians. David Phelps to the Blue Jays. Uh, Nick Pavetta to the Red Sox. And uh, McLean went to the Yankees. So uh, let's see here. Jake Arrieta, I just want to give a little love to real quick. Man, getting him back for the Cubs is awesome. He went 22 and 23 in Philly, which is okay, obviously. Four and five for them. Um, you know, he was there for four or five years. No, maybe not four or five years, but he had three years, I believe. Uh, so they'll miss him a little bit. I think he's the guy that they're going to miss more than anybody out of the guys I mentioned anyways. Uh, not a huge loss. He wasn't very good in Philly, let's just be honest. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat that at all. He was awesome with the Cubs and just did not live up to the potential there. And um, I know uh, he gets his arm worked on by one of my friend's kids. Uh, they both go get their arms worked on by the same guy. And uh, I guess Jake mentions a lot how he hated the fans in Philadelphia. And sorry, Phillies fans, for bringing it up to you guys, but he did not like you. And David, let's just be honest, man. If you if you don't perform in Philadelphia, uh, you will uh, you will hear about it. Let's just say that. And I always go back to when JD Drew was drafted, and uh, he did not want to go to the Phillies. And the Phillies fans would throw batteries at him when he was out in the outfield. Man, these guys are relentless in Philadelphia, <laughs> man. You do not you do not want to wear a different team's uh, jersey when you go into the Philadelphia Phillies field. That is one of the things like Yankee Stadium you just do not do. So, um, yeah, <laughs> there's some real fans, that. man. It's crazy. So, out of all those guys that they lost, do you think there's any significant ones, or do you think there's nothing really that bad there to lose? Nothing to see here. Uh, I will say this, just for the record, Jay Bruce is mashing the <laughs> Yankees camp. I, I honestly. I think he's going to get that last roster spot, uh, which is which is weird because when they signed him, I thought, well, how strange is that? They kind of had a couple guys already penciled in there that were, you know, had had been had done well for him, uh, Mike Talkman, uh, especially, and I, I, it looks like he's going to lose his job. Jay Bruce uh, is again just mashing in Yankees camp, so I just want to throw that out there. But the other guys that they lost, uh, I don't think they're really going to miss any of those guys. Um, you know, they again they replaced that bullpen the guys that they lost with a bunch of good quality uh, guys. And so um, I think they upgraded the team, DJ, to be honest with you, overall uh, this offseason. Like I said, I wish there was a couple things they would have done different. You know, at one point, it looked like that the, the Phillies weren't going to spend any money. And I guess Dave Dombrowski cast that spell that he always casts on teams. And suddenly, Real Muto gets signed. Didi Gregorius is coming back. And they made a few additions. So good for them, man. I, I like the Phillies. Uh, they're an interesting team. It's terrible that they're in the division that they're in because it's, it's rough, man. I mean, let's be honest. And, and if I'm not mistaken, DJ, I think I heard today, like their whole first month is playing the Braves and the oh, Mets. Yes. So what a way to start a season, yes, man. I heard How that brutal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a tough, tough schedule. But then if you think about it, the whole East is going to have that similar of a schedule too. They're going to be in the same kind of boat, but you don't want to draw the Braves about 10 times in the month of April, which is what they're about to get. So that's a very good point on your end. So David, let's transition to the projected lineup. Give us what you got for the Phillies lineup. I'm not so sure about this order, but this is the order that I found it in. So uh, McCutcheon will lead off and play left field last year, 253, 10 homers, 34 RBIs. I love Andrew McCutcheon. I loved him with the Yankees. I wanted them so bad to re-sign him, and it didn't happen. Uh, he immediately got injured, and so it was nice to see him bounce back last year and have a good year. Alec Bohm, 338, four homers, 23 RBIs. Uh, looks to be a great uh, player for them, solid young player. Bryce Harper, one of the best in the game, no matter what you think about him. Uh, he is fun to watch still, 268, 13 homers, 33 RBIs. Uh, JT Real Muto back at catcher, probably the best in the league, 266, 11 homers, 32 RBIs. Reese Hoskins, so, you know, he kind of had a down year last year. Power numbers were still good, but 245, 10 homers, 26 RBIs. It would be nice to see him bounce back for them. And then Didi Gregorius, as you mentioned, he led their team in RBIs. What a great teammate 
Didi Gregorius is. Uh, to be honest with you, as a Yankee fan, I wouldn't have cared at all if they would have let LeMahieu go and sign Gregorius and, and another pitcher. Um, that was kind of my plan. If they couldn't sign LeMahieu, who, who I'm happy to have back, by the way, but I love Didi Gregorius. Uh, Gene Segura at second, 266, seven homers, 25 RBIs. And I have Scott Kingry in center field, who had a terrible year last year, 159, three homers, six RBIs. Long been a top prospect. But that's going to be a position to watch right there, DJ. They're going to have to get some productions. They got a couple options there. But that is the 2021 Philadelphia Phillies starting lineup, as I see it anyway. Yeah, I got the same thing. And, man, you're so right about McCutcheon. I love that guy. He is such a great human being as well. He's a character guy. Uh, he, he donates so much money to a lot of people. He's, he really is a class A man. I'll tell you that right now, uh, from everything that I've seen from him, he just seems like a really cool guy would be a lot of fun to hang out with him. Uh, just seems like a really great human being. So Andrew McCutcheon, keep it up, man. You've always been really fun to watch and you're a great human being as well. So yeah, man, I like bomb a lot. I don't know. Boom. <laughs> I'm going to slaughter his name all night. Uh, but what an <laughs> outstanding season he had. Bryce Harper, I found an interesting fact on today. I guess he uh it's kind of it's kind of cool actually. Like he has he doesn't drink alcohol at all. Like he's his religion says, you know, not to do it and he doesn't do it. And I guess like if he even drinks a pop, like that's kind of like other people drinking like alcohol is like every once in a while. Like for him to just have a pop is very rare for him to put caffeine in his body too. So that man drinks a lot of milk and water and Gatorade, I think. So that's pretty cool as well. Cause you, I mean, let's just be honest. You kind of think of Bryce Harper and you think he would be a big partier, but he's not. So that's pretty cool to hear uh, on that. It, it does, my, it does my heart good to hear you say pop. Yeah. <laughs> throw that out there. But it's better than all those guys that said soda back in the day. Of Tennessee oh, Tennessee. Uh, yeah, the twins and all them. And man, that's oh, yeah. talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Stephen Sheldon right now saying, uh, yeah, my name is Jamie Jenkins. I like pizza and soda. Sheldon <laughs> used to do that all the time, man. To those twins. <laughs> so funny. So, yeah, JT is the best catcher in the game. Didi is a very underrated player, like you said. Hoskins can mash, and that center fielder job is definitely up for grabs. So, it's a good lineup, man. I really, really, really like it. I'm a big fan. So, what about the rotation, David? Solid rotation. Aaron Nola is a total stud. He's been that for a couple of years now. 2-0 and last year with a 277. Zach Wheeler, that looks like a great signing. Uh, he was an ace last year, 4-2, 292. Zach Eflin, 4-2, uh, 397 last year. And then again, that, that back into that rotation. So one of the three of Matt Moore, Chase Anderson, and Spencer Howard are going to be back there. Uh, I have to believe Spencer Howard's going to hold down one of those spots, and the last spot will either go to Moore or Anderson. You know, one thing about Moore that kind of gets left out, you know, Japan played a longer season last year, and um, he'll be built up to pitch more innings. And so if if he can find it, uh, again, that'll be valuable that he can give those extra innings. But um, I would like to see them done a little bit more on the back end of that rotation. They still have Vince Velasquez as well, and, again, Ivan Nova. And so certainly out of out – of, those four or five guys, they ought to be able to find uh, a couple starters there. Yeah, Spencer Howard's going to be the four guy in this rotation, just just being honest. And that fifth spot will be very interesting to see. I'm not a fan of Velasquez anymore, David. I've always been, like, wondering if he's going to, you know, show what he got. He's got good stuff, don't get me wrong. He just gets rocked every year. He had a 556 ERA, man. I'm just done with him. I really am. Like, maybe be the long relief guy when we're getting smashed 5 nothing or something and get us through the day. Uh, that's maybe his role, to be honest with you. Not a fan of his anymore. I really thought they were going to get something out of him. Uh, but they got some options there. You know, I think they got four really good starters. Spencer Howard is going to be a dog, man. And these these guys on this team talk really highly of him. He got rocked a little bit last year. But um, I'm beginning to not take as much stock into 2020 stats as, as a lot of people did. And uh, I think he's going to be just fine. He's always been a big prospect for them. So. Four really good starters there. And then, you know, catching lightning in a bottle on that fifth spot to get them through the season. And then uh, I think, I think to be honest with you, David, probably all those guys you mentioned, we'll see at least a few starts, no doubt. So uh, they'll, they'll piece it together at the end there and they'll get through. So 
Um, yeah, no doubt. So what do you uh, what do you have for the strengths of the Phillies, David? I love their lineup. And, uh, to be honest, I didn't realize how good that lineup was uh, until, you know, you go through there and look just line by line. And they have star power. Um, they've got the up and comer. Um, you know, they got the just the solid guy like D.D. Gregorius. I would put him in that in that category, um, just quiet and solid every year. Um, so, man, I think the uh, Phillies lineup is for real. It proved it proved so last year. Like I said, sixth and batting, sixth and homers, fourth and runs. They they pretty much are bringing everybody back. Um, so I'm going to say that their their strength is the lineup. I agree. I love the offense. I'm a big fan. Uh, it. It hasn't really changed from last year either. They pretty much got the same guys rolling out there offensively uh, that they did last year. So this is this is a very similar li lineup from the 2020 team that produced uh, very well, like you mentioned, the numbers there. Um, I'm a big fan of it, and I'll add the top end of the rotation to that too. I really like the top three. I really like all four, to be honest with you, with Howard there. I'm a big fan. Um, so, man, these guys got a shot at the playoffs. They really do. I believe that. Um, the NL East – has a very deep feel to it this year. This is the best division in baseball. I truly believe that from top to bottom. So they've got their hands full from that perspective, but they're right there. They can contend. They can do it. Uh, they've got Harper, Didi, Hoskins, JT. So your offense can roll really smooth when you got guys like that in there. So what do you feel the weakness is now, David? This is interesting. I want, I want to know what you think uh, since, since he went out and sort of fixed the bullpen. Uh, which was historically bad, obviously. What do you what do you got for weaknesses on this team? I'm going to trust that Joe Girardi uh, fixes this bullpen. Uh, I, I'm a believer in him. Uh, I'm a believer in some of these guys. Thank God Archie Bradley's been good for a long time. So I'm going to go again with the back end of that rotation. I've been harping on it this whole episode. Um, they're just missing um, a guy back there. And if you compare their rotations to the other ones in their division, that's the difference. Yeah. That's the difference. Their, their lineups are as good. Their top couple uh, pitchers, two or three, are as good as anybody. But, you know, for the number four starter, I mean, let's think about the Nationals rotation, for instance. That's the team that, that, that I kind of think they're going to be competing, competing with all year. The Nationals are just better, man. I mean, that's, that's just it in a nutshell. Everywhere else they're equal or maybe the Phillies are even a little bit better. Those last couple starters, there's some distance there. And you can say that about uh, the Braves, the Mets. You know, the Mets, man, got a deep rotation. So I think the weakness is going to be the back end of the rotation. I agree. I 100% have that written down too. You know, I'm going to talk a little bit about Matt Moore here. I don't, I don't know. He's kind of penciled in right now as a fifth starter. Um, I'm, I'm kind of baffled by it a little bit. Unless, like you said, they just know something we don't. Uh, they need a better option for that fifth spot because the Braves and Nationals have five dogs top to bottom, man. That rota those rotations are no joke. Uh, so they need to step up. Matt Moore hasn't been relevant since 2016, David. He lost 15 games in 2017. He had a 679 ERA in 2018. He only pitched 10 innings in 2019, and he was over in Japan in 2020. So what am I missing? Like, I don't get it. Like, did he all of a sudden find it? You know what, David? Here's the thing, and I heard this too. Is like, man, just thank God, you know, like Scott Casimir, that you're left-handed because you can find a job if you can throw left-handed <laughs> – you're finding a job until you're 40. You can do it. Uh, you can hang around in this game for a very long time and not be very good if you're left-handed. So maybe this is that situation. Maybe he's turned the corner. You know, I like Matt Moore a lot when he was with the Rays. He was really good for a few years there, no doubt. But it's been a very long time. So I think all the guys you mentioned about the five guys that are going for that fifth spot, that'll be a battle, no doubt, to see who can win that spot. And maybe go along here if, if they start contending. They go out and get somebody. So it's up in the air, and we'll see what they do there. So, um, yeah, that's all I had to say on that. So position battles, David, what do you got for that? We'll go back to center field uh, against Scott Kingery, Roman Quinn, and then Mickey Moniak, who is one of their, Ooh, yeah. there one of their top prospects, well, top one of the top ten prospects. None of these guys really hit it all last year. And I, I really think the Phillies want Kingry to win that spot, to be honest with you. I would if I was a Phillies fan because he's kind of got the pedigree. But I don't know, DJ. I, you know, we'll see. Roman Quinn played there some last year, played well. Again, Moniac's the up-and-coming and guy. So we'll see. So harp a little bit on the, the why you want Kingry to win the – why do you think that they want Kingry to win that job over 
the number one pick in the draft, Moniak. Do you think he's – do you think they want Kingery to win that, or do you think they want the prospect to show up? I'm, I'm a little – I'm a little well, intrigued Kingery, by that. Kingery had some uh, buzz around him coming up. And, you know, he's, he's kind of lost his luster, man, to be honest with you. I mean, he's a guy that, you know, you heard talked about for a couple years as, you know, a future <laughs> star. And, you know, I wonder, DJ, sometimes – I haven't followed the Phillies real heavy, but you know they've moved him everywhere. And I wonder how much that's affected him. I think he came up, if I'm not mistaken, as a second baseman. I think he's played a little bit of short here and there, uh, maybe some third and also in the outfield. And so I wonder how much that's affected him. But, again, he was one of their top prospects, just like Moniak was. It's just been a couple of years ago. Um, so we'll see. And like I said, Kingery, I think, is going to have a little edge over those other guys, at least in the beginning. But I think the leash is going to be short. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Kingery – uh, this is a position battle I had too, as well. And the same guys you mentioned. And Ingrid, he's got a 233 career batting average, 159 last year. But in 2019, David, you know, he had 19 bombs with 55 ribbies and hit 258. So he showed some promise in 2019. You know, he showed he can play in the major league level. So I don't totally disagree with you, but I just kind of think, you know, it's Mickey time. If this guy's your number one pick from 2016. I mean, what are you waiting for? So speaking of that, David, let's turn right into the prospects. Who you got for a prospect for the Phillies to keep an eye on? The one problem the Phillies have that Dave Dombrowski will probably make worse is their farm system. Uh, 27th ranked, according to Baseball America. They only have two prospects in the top 100, which are Spencer Howard and Mick Abel. Um, but I'm going to go with Francisco Morales as somebody who can make uh, some noise this year. He's their number four prospect, six foot four, up to 98 with his fastball and a filthy slider. So he's already got two plus pitches. Uh, he's had some control issues, but already projects as a middle of the rotation starter. And so I would look for him if the Phillies are uh, in, in the race at the end, towards the end, look for this guy to maybe find his way into the bullpen or even in the back end of that rotation if he can make some strides. So watch out for, uh, Francisco Morales. Nice one there. I read up a little bit about him too as well. So that's a good one for sure. I got Mickey Moniak. I wanted to talk about him a little bit more. Uh, he made his debut finally in 2020. He really came up a little bit, but I think he's kind of forgotten in the mix a little bit here, David. This guy was the number one pick in all of baseball in 2016. So when I was talking about him today, or I'm not talking about him, like reading up on him in the last week or whatever, I just don't really get what the weight is. I mean, you know, this guy's got to either put up or shut up at this point, don't you think? I mean, the 2016 draft was a long time ago, David, and um, he got on the table in 2020, which is good to see. But let's see what he's made of. Girardi has liked what he's done so far in camp. He's already been, uh, you know, praising him big time for what he's seen. He hit two monster bombs off your Yankees in spring training, which isn't hard to do. But, you know, <laughs> he, did, he did impress with two monster homers in one of the games that recently. So he's he's uh he's starting to show Girardi what he's made of a little bit here. And um he's 6'2, 195. He plays left field, center field, he bats left, he throws right. He's 22 years old from California, and he made his debut last last year on September 16th. So he barely came up. That's why I kind of have him as a prospect. Some people I to be honest with you, David, I didn't even know he came up. I kind of was like, oh, he came up last year. But uh, obviously that was just for a few days there, two weeks towards the end of the season uh, that he kind of showed his face a little bit, made his debut, got that out of the way. A 22-year-old number one pick, David, I mean, what are we waiting for? I mean, is it is he going to do it or is he not? Like, that's kind of what I'm wondering here is why are we not going to play him and give him a shot? Uh, this is something that Phillies fans know, too. They know he's the number one pick in the draft. And if he doesn't play well, Ooh, that poor that poor human being he will never hear the end of it in philadelphia <laughs> but, uh it's time to see what he's made of and and uh i think this might be the year david i really do i agree, I, agree. Yeah. I actually didn't even realize he was the number one pick so uh that, that's a great point um it's time and and, and the position's open so um it's gonna, gonna be interesting to see if he grabs hold and like i said girardi girardi is a loyal guy that's one thing about him. So I think Kingery's going to get the first look, but you know, you never know. Maybe, maybe he has a good enough spring. He can, he can push himself ahead. It'll definitely be interesting to see that. No doubt. It's, it's Mickey time in my eyes. Oh, here we go. Favorite memory, David, what do you got, buddy? 
spring of 2001. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, listen, this is one of my favorite all-time trips for a lot of reasons. Spring of 2001, Tennessee <laughs> Temple goes to Clearwater, Florida during spring training <laughs> to play baseball. And there was so much that happened around this trip, but we got to go to a <laughs> Phillies game. And I believe it was the Phillies and the Astros. And DJ is a big autograph hawk. He <laughs> always has been. And DJ, you got a little starstruck. And it's still probably one of my favorite memories. We were over by the bullpen. Guys were coming out. DJ, we were getting some autographs here and there. I think back then, uh brandon duckworth was a big prospect and so we got his autograph and out walks the infamous pat burrell <laughs> dj's all excited and there he is there he is there he is and dj starts to yell for him mr burrell mr burrell oh he didn't hear me so still <laughs> nothing will ever top my phillies memory of mr burrell and there's a lot of other funny things happened on that trip uh, uh, oh uh, billy garrick the boss uh, I remember we were out on the beach at Clearwater and this very attractive young lady <laughs> threw down right beside us and old Billy jumps up. Coach Hall was real nervous about what was going on and Billy jumps up. He gets him out of gospel track and says, I'm going to witness. <laughs> and I thought he was messing and sure enough, Billy was red as a tomato from getting sunburnt and he just slid right in there. And so there were just so many good things that happened that trip. But DJ, you can't beat Mr. Burrell. I will never live that one down. And it's, no, it's a constant reminder every single year on that one from David, no doubt. Um, needless to say, I did not get his autograph that day. So <laughs> I did get Duckworth and uh, Doug Glanville, though. So that wasn't too bad. I mean, but man, that's that's too funny, David. You're killing me on that one for sure. I didn't know I, I kind of I kind of had a good good idea you were gonna go that route with the place. <laughs> but you can always tell, like David, they, they go to Clearwater for spring training every year. And to be honest with you, like, um, I always know that. Like, I don't know where many teams are for spring training, but I always know the Phillies are in Clearwater because we got to go there, and that was a lot of fun to go see them. And it's a huge memory for me as well. To, in 2001 going to see them play just a lot of fun to go with your teammates to watch a, a major league game like all of us were there which is really cool you know we all went to it it wasn't just like hey 10 of us want to go to a Braves game or whatever uh this is the whole team going to a, a game together which was a lot of fun no doubt so uh, my memory involves that and I'll give the honorable mention to uh a couple things here John Cruck number one <laughs> anytime John Cruck plays baseball uh I love it it's a great memory the 1993 Phillies uh, with Mitch Williams giving up the bomb to Joe Carter uh, lives in infamy. That was a historic World Series there um, with a bunch of dirt bags on the Phillies. They made it all the way to the World Series with guys with mullets who did not look like baseball players by any sense of the word or the imagination, but somehow made it to the World Series. Uh, honorable mention is also Mike Schmidt. I'll tell you what, David, um, Mike Schmidt, man, I – might have a different outlook on him as one of the greatest third basemen, if not the greatest third baseman of all time. I always have thought he was number one all time. And, and the reason being is he is the ultimate all time cub killer for Cubs fans out there. He just missiles out of Wrigley field. Every time he came here, 78 of his home runs, David were against the Cubs, seven eight against the Cubs. That's unbelievable. Um, and he hit what like the uh, all time against the Cubs. It is, it's got to be up there as far as a, a individual versus any team all time, too. Because that's, that's insane, that's, that is insane. A fifth of his home runs, basically. Yeah, it's it's wow. crazy, but I promise you, like every time he came to Wrigley, he hit a home run. It really seemed like that. It's unbelievable. How I think he had 500 and 12 or something maybe more he's in the 500 somewhere with his homers but uh Cubs fans my age especially think he's the greatest third baseman of all time because he tortured us uh his 284 hits versus the Cubs are the most of any hitter versus the Cubs in the divisional era as well so not only did he hit bombs against us but he got on base all the time David against the Cubs so I would I would not say that's a favorite memory but 
when you think Phillies, man, I always go to Mike Schmidt and how much he just tortured us over the years when I was uh, when I was a kid and just how great I thought he was as a player. And obviously he was a great player, but even historically against the Cubs, he was off the charts. So, all right, uh, um, stadiums. Have you been to Veterans Stadium that was born in 71 and died in 2003? Or have you been to Citizens Bank Park, which is 2004 to present? Either one. But DJ, this one's real high on my list. Philadelphia, I believe, is about six hours from here. Um, I love this park, DJ. This is the park we talked about last year. They have a wiffle ball field. Man, I would be all over that thing. Um, they got the Liberty Bell out in center field. Uh, I really like Citizens Bank Park, and we, we got to make that happen. How far is Philadelphia for you, DJ? So I looked this up because I knew we were going to talk about this a little bit. And I've got a plan, I think, to where we could do this, but we're going to have to we're have to figure it out a little closer as we get to this. Um, it is like 12 or 13 hours away from me, which is doable. I can do that. Um, I'm not like voting that off because it's, you know, that's also, that's basically like a chip trip from college to home for me. So I'm used to that kind of trip. But um, that field looks awesome. I'd love to go for sure. Uh, Labor Day weekend destination 2022, buddy. Uh, we've already got 2021 set up in Cleveland. Uh, this should be our 2022 Labor Day. Uh, I think I sneak around West Virginia heading out there to Philadelphia. So maybe we can meet up and find a way to continue that trip together. So that'd be a lot more fun to kind of hook up in the middle and finish it as opposed to me just driving 13 hours and meeting you there. So we'll have to figure that one out for sure. But that looks like a lot of fun and definitely one we need to check out. And also we can go to Civil War battlefields together too. That'd be a lot of fun to check all that out right there. I'm sure we can make a few days trip out of that, you know, show our kids that as well. And uh, that's something we definitely have to do. That looks like a lot of fun uh, to go to. I promise you I will wear Phillies gear when I go into that field, though. I don't think I want to lose my life wearing anything else. <laughs> Phillies gear. So we got to make sure we buy some Phillies gear and go in there and mingle with the Phillies fans uh, and watch the Philly fanatic do his thing. The best mascot in all of sports resides in Philadelphia. So uh, it's a lot of fun, man. It looks like a great stadium. Um, yeah, and, and uh, I, I look forward to it, man. We should definitely set that one up. Absolutely, man. I'm in. So trivia time, David. What do you got for me, buddy? Crazy stat, DJ. That, I really enjoy looking up this stuff. So listen to this. This Phillies player holds the MLB record for most stolen bases in a season without getting caught. Who is it? Ooh, without getting caught. That's the key there. I believe it was 26 straight, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I'm going to go. I've got a, I've got two backup plans if this doesn't work. I'm going to go Jimmy Rollins because Rollins Great, yes. is a stolen base machine. No? That's a that's a great guess, but that's not it. Okay, I'm going to go Juan Samuel then. Another great guess. Not it. Von this Hayes. Nope. Oh, got listen, it. Listen, man, this guy's not known for his stolen bases. He's one of my favorite Phillies ever. Matt Kearns knows I used to have a man crush on this guy. <laughs> it's my boy Chase Utley, man. Chase oh, Utley. Yes. What a great baseball player. Just all around, good fielder. Good hitter, uh, obviously good on the bases at one point in his career. I had no idea that he would hold a record like that. That is crazy. <laughs> Chase Utley <laughs> shows no emotion whatsoever <laughs> in life it. on the baseball field. <laughs> that man is stone faced and just he's Chase Utley, man, to a T. Like he great one of the greatest second basemen of all time, no doubt. I'm not gonna knock his game, but man. He just has a weird personality where he's just <laughs> – he is what he is. He's stone-faced. He rarely shows a lot of emotion. Uh, Mets fans hate him for cleating whatever they he, he cleated in the game or whatever. Um, but Chase Utley, man, 
That that's a good one. What what was in the twenty six stolen bases without getting caught? It's either twenty six or twenty three straight stolen bases without getting caught. Yeah, yeah, Matt. You see, Matt, I got you know the Whit Merrifield crush. This one here, Chase Utley crush. That's <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty disgusting, actually. <laughs> so, David, my trivia question to you is: How many World Series titles have the Philadelphia? any type of Phillies team won over the years. Are we considering the Philadelphia A's? Are we putting them in the Oakland category or in the Philadelphia Phillies categories? Philadelphia Phillies category. Uh, that's going to be a tough one for me to answer. I'm going to go with four. Four is incorrect. There is only two, and they're both um, in our lifetime. The first one was 1980 when me and you were in diapers. And the second one is 2008 with the Utley team that we mentioned in Rollins and the boys when they pulled it off, Ryan Howard, uh, Cole Hamels, and the gang there with 2008. So only two titles in their uh, historic franchise, uh, which is kind of surprising, actually. When I looked this up, I thought it would be more. I would have guessed four. I'm not going to lie to you, so I won't hound you too bad on missing this one. But um, we both failed. Huh? I knew those two. Yeah, and they were close. Remember the walk off again? You you referenced it, the walk off uh, with Joe Carter. So they were close to number three. They had the closer on the mound, and <laughs> Joe Carter walked walked it off. So yes, uh, very one of the best close. World Series of our lifetime. Yeah, yeah, it really was. That was a historic one. A um, lot of fun. You know, when you get to when we had the crazy league year last year, where no there was no baseball for a while, you get to see a lot of old games and. That was definitely one that was rewatched is that Blue Jays Phillies game, no doubt. So, David, here's here's an interesting one. I'm looking forward to hearing what you got here for predicted finish in the NL East. What do you got for the Phillies? This is brutal, DJ. So I looked at a bunch of predictions. I saw some predictions that had them winning the AL East, or no, sorry, the NL East. And in that prediction, the crazy thing was I can't remember who who it was, but somebody that predicts a lot. Uh, that you hear about a lot, but they had the Braves either third or fourth, and I just cannot see that. Um, I think the the Phillies are going to be fourth place, DJ. That's where I'm going to put them. Again, I, I look down these lineups, and I look down these rotations, but I can see them being first. I can totally see it. I can see something happening and pushing them ahead. I, the Braves are just too good. They've been too good for too long. I just can't believe that they would pass them. I feel kind of the same way about the Mets. The, the, again, I talked about they're just deeper in the rotation. Um, the lineup, you know, you couldn't say is any worse than the Phillies. So I'm going to have to put the Mets ahead of them. The one I was struggling with is the Nationals and the Marlins. I don't know what to think about the Marlins, CJ, <laughs> but I, I, put the, I put the Nationals ahead of them. Um, but, again, I can, see that, I can see that going a lot of different ways. What do you think? So this division is going to – we're going to, like, completely scramble this division, I believe, when it's all said and done. I'm not going to give away my uh, full predicted NL East finish yet, but I'm going to tell you that the Phillies are going to finish in third place in this division. Um, I really like this team. Uh, I think they're they're really, really good. They're, they're a deadline team where they can make themselves even greater. I like the rotation. I love the lineup. The team is very close, man, and I don't doubt – the teams, you know, some of these guys have them winning the division. I saw that too. And I, I don't knock that, man. I really don't. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of what they're doing in Philadelphia. I think they're very close. Uh, I think they could sneak into the playoffs. I'm not putting them in the playoffs since they are a third place team. I got to say that they're not in my playoff pool. Um, six teams are making the playoffs in each uh, league this year. As it stands right now, they are not one of the six in my book. They will just miss it. I believe they are very close. If there was an eight-man team, uh, eight teams that made the playoffs like last year, I would have put them in. But with the six, they just missed in my book. It's going to be a really fun season for Phillies fans, though. I really believe it. And this team is no joke, David. And uh, this is going to be the, the biggest battle of a division in all of baseball. I truly believe that. So once again, David, we disagree. But I will shine in the end and show everybody that I was right. <laughs> So former teammates, David, we got a couple here. This is kind of funny um, that are Phillies fans. If you remember Paul Peoples, 
who used to play with us, and Ray Alger. Those two guys. Phillies fans to a T. Um, so, you have any memories of those two guys, David? Paul Peebles oh, is oh, famous oh, for his relationship <laughs> with A-Rod. And so that's, that's the one thing I remember about Paul Peebles. <laughs> With Ray Alger, I'll actually have to say this. I kind of wish Ray would have stuck around. Ray was a pretty decent baseball player, I thought. Yeah. Um, you know, he was just there the one semester, but uh, I think he could have helped us. He might have eventually filled that second base hole that, that uh, we ended up having there later on in the in the uh, while we were there. But um, I remember Ray being a tough guy. He played at a couple of different positions, and uh, that's about it. How about you? So I got to ask you, have you heard from either of those guys since we left college? Just out of curiosity, one day I looked up just to see if they were on Facebook, and I was able to find Ray Alger, um, but I, I did not stumble across Paul Peebles. You did find Ray. Wow. You got to kind of, yeah. did you try to friend him or anything? I'm just asking. I don't know. I've never heard no. from that guy. Um, no, I, I didn't. Maybe you can look that up and we can try to get him on our Phillies podcast next year. So we'll try and get a hold of him we'll somehow. That. Yeah, for real, because that'd be interesting to see, catch up with him. Um, I, I do remember him getting de pants in a pickup basketball game, so maybe that's why he kind of <laughs> left. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yes. His sweatpants went to his ankles, man. I don't know how that happened, but I just remember <laughs> laughing my head off. And I'm not too sure he found that very funny, but uh, Ray, that was that was pretty funny, man. But like you said, he could pitch. He could play second. Um, I wish we had stuck around because we could have always used, you know, the depth in pitching. With all the games we played, we could have used more arms, no doubt. Um, I'm not really sure his whole story as to why he left or anything like that. Um, but it'd be interesting to catch up with him and on a Phillies podcast or a summer podcast that we do. Uh, so we'll have to check out that Facebook, and you have to kind of show that to me later. But, yeah, Paul Pe Peoples, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say A-Rod made it in our last two podcasts, your favorite player of all time, David. And uh -huh. It just makes my night that he's – He's been mentioned in both of these, but it, it was kind of very funny, David, because he would be literally in the hallway about 10 feet from us. And we'd be like, hey, Paul, we got to go do this or that. And he'd be like, hey, guys, wait, I'm talking to A-Rod right now. You know, I, I'll go <laughs> jump with you in a minute. Like, Paul, you are not talking to A-Rod. Shut up. You know, he, he supposedly was a high school teammate of his. I don't believe that either. No way. Um, I think Paul was telling a lot of stories there. Paul, I love you, man. I'm just dogging your A-Rod stories. I think there were fiction. You still haven't proved it to me, so I still don't believe you. So <laughs> I totally agree, by the way. <laughs> well, David, unless you got anything to add, that is the Phillies wrap up for us this year. Going to be a fun season in Philadelphia, man. I really like this team. Uh, I really like this division. This is going to be a great run, great chase to the playoffs. A lot of fun battles to watch here. It's Mickey time, Joe. Let's go get that boy in the lineup. And, uh, Thanks to all you Phillies fans and all you baseball fans for checking in. Please subscribe to the Frenemies podcast on YouTube. Check us out. Give us some likes. And Phillies fans, give us some looks. And we'll uh, wrap this one up, David. And it's been a pleasure as always. And good night, everybody.